parents, where do you get your parenting advice? Stick around. That's what I'm talking about today on the Parent Teacher Bridge. Hi, I'm Rebecca with the Parent Teacher Bridge, where you can find the ideas and resources you need to empower you to become your child's most influential teacher. And today I'm talking about parenting advice. You know, I'm a parent, but I also also recognize that I am not a perfect parent and none of us are. So when we have advice or need advice, where do we go? Here's what I normally see. You have a mom that's a member of a mom's group in so, on a social media page, and she has a certain concern about her child's education, about parenting, maybe even about her child's health, and she asks a random question to a bunch of strangers in this mom's group. But if you think about it, most of those people are going to be her peers, and she's not getting any advice from other people. She doesn't really know them. One thing I notice is that the advice given is vastly different than what it would have been just five or even 10 years ago. And that tells me that something is changing. In other words, the answers that you're getting is not really, they're not really based on a standard. They're just based on what is popular at the time. And if you study history, you know that just because something is popular at the time does not mean that it is the best decision. Sometimes when moms post questions, they are just looking for some sort of approval and they will say, okay, here's my situation. Am I wrong? Am I wrong about that? And a lot of the times they just get approval from other moms and they say, oh yeah, you did the right thing. I would have done that too. But you don't know the people, you don't know their children, you don't know how they're raising their children. So I'm going to give you some tips that you should consider about when you are asking for some of this parenting advice. And the first one is wisdom. You're going to find wisdom from other people who have gone through a similar situation and that situation has been enough in the past that they have gained some sort of insight from it. Usually it's going to be someone that's a bit older than you. It's best if it can be somebody that you personally know because you have an idea more about their situation and how things turned out in the end. They can give you tips on things that maybe they did that was the wrong thing and they may say, okay, just make sure you do not do this or they can tell you certain things that you should avoid. For every decision that you make, there are going to be repercussions or consequences. So someone who has gone through it themselves can share that wisdom with you and let you know, okay, just remember if you do this, here's what is likely to happen. And to me, that just makes a lot more sense than just pulling your peers on what you should or shouldn't do when they themselves have not really experienced that same thing and they don't know what it's going to be like later down the road like an older person would. Parents, are you looking to spend a little bit more time with your children and influence them? I welcome you to consider homeschooling. I have a special download that you can get for free. It's called Survival Guide for the New Homeschool Family. Let me encourage you to at least research before you say it is a hard no. There's so many lessons that you can learn alongside your children that are real world lessons and you can grow that relationship with your child and also be free of some of the uh, curriculum choices made by the public school system. The next thing to consider is a standard. You know, it just makes things easier if you have a set standard that you follow because a standard by definition is something that's not going to be moving. If you are just using what's popular at the time, like I said before, it's going to change five or 10 years from now versus something that's been tried and true and tested. You have a standard to measure your decisions up against. Now, for our family, the Bible is what we use for our standard. Just by following some biblical principles, we already have some decisions already made for us. There are some things we don't have to wonder about. It's a given no, or it's a given yes. And then if there's something in the gray area, we can slow down and reflect on that, gather wisdom from someone else that we know who has been through that, but we use a set standard that many people have used for years. If you don't have that, I ask you to consider what is your standard? Because if you cannot answer that, if you do not have one, then it's likely going to be just whatever feels right to you or 
whatever's popular at the time. And we know that everyone's conscience is a little bit different. Some people are not bothered by doing what I would consider terrible things. <laughs> and so that's not a good standard to measure uh, where you get your advice. Another thing to consider is do your research. Find out whatever your question pertains to, whether it's your child's handwriting, your child's math, maybe something socially that's going on with your child. Look at what the research says and just don't use one area. Uh, it's nice to find information online, but information online can sometimes change with the culture as well. So you may want to even check out some actual books that were written in a different time period just to get some advice. It doesn't mean you have to follow it exactly. You may look at all of the different research and come to your own conclusion together. Now, I'm not saying that change is bad. It is always good to grow and adapt and to reevaluate things. But if you are constantly changing, as in you are changing with the culture where so many things change between two and five years, it can lead to confusion with your child. So here are some things before parting that I'm going to share with you that you need to reflect on. The next time you feel the urge to ask a question to your peer group online, remember, Find solid research on the issue from different sources. Consult experienced parents that you personally know who have some wisdom to share. Consult your set and proven standard, whatever that may be. Again, for us, that is the Bible. You may follow a certain uh, parenting guru out there. Don't forget to click like and subscribe and leave me a comment. You can email me, Rebecca at the Parent Teacher Bridge. I respond to every email that you send. And remember, parents, you are your child's most influential teacher.